Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial for LR Timelapse 6. Today we are going to deal with the holy grail of time-lapse photography. I'll show you how to edit such sequences. There's another tutorial from me where I show you how to shoot them. You'll need a sequence that has been recorded according to that technique in order to being able to edit it here. But it's really simple. The basic idea behind the holy grail technique is that you can just freely change the camera settings like exposure, ISO and even aperture while shooting. You can either do that manually just carefully on your camera or you can use a tool like QDSLR dashboard on your mobile phone which will connect via USB or Wi-Fi to your camera and do all that changes in exposure, ISO or aperture automatically or manually as you wish. But as I said, check out my other tutorial to learn how to record such sequences. Now we are going to deal with the editing part. In this tutorial I will focus on the holy grail editing. I will assume that you have watched my basic tutorial for LR Timelapse 6 in order to have understood the workflow and I'm not going into that in detail today anymore. So when going through the workflow with this sequence it will be basically the same as in the basic tutorial. We click on keyframes wizard. This will allow us to create a couple of keyframes. In this case I will leave it with those five keyframes that we have suggested here but you could also change the amount of keyframes. Additionally you will see those small little triangles and those triangles they denote the position where the camera settings have been changed. In this case for example from ISO 500 to 400 or here from 200 to 160. Later on we will have changes in exposure from 1.3 seconds to 1 second in order to compensate for the sunrise here to have all the photos properly exposed. Because if I didn't change the camera settings here I would quickly have overexposed images. Next step would be the holy grail wizard. And that curve is basically a mirrored version of the blue one and you can imagine probably that if we add those two curves we get a rather flat progression and that's the idea. Now we have two sliders here which allow us to rotate the curve and to stretch the curve. If the curve looks like this, it's very close to the horizontal middle line, then it's fine. But should your curve look like this, then you would have rather big compensation steps because this, for example, would rise the exposure here quite a lot and this would lower the exposure and we would like to avoid compensation steps that are too big. So we will just have the curve as close to the middle line as possible. Now we go to save and this will already save a sequence that won't have that steps anymore. But in the first instance now we only see the developed keyframes here in LR Timelapse. And now we can go to Lightroom in order to edit those keyframes. I will quickly drag this to my Lightroom, bring that up with the importer, then make sure that add is selected as always, click on import, right click on the first image, go to folder and library in order to leave that collection previous import and have the folder itself selected. I make sure that the keyframes filter here is activated so that we only see the keyframes. Now go to develop and I will do a rough editing here. I started quite dark with the editing and edited the white balance very warm and now I'm bringing those edits to the second keyframe with the control click and the second keyframe on Mac it would be command click and then scripts sync keyframes and again the script will preserve the holy grail adjustments and everything that we have done before in LR time lapse that's the advantage of using the script in contrast to a native synchronizer copy paste in Lightroom. So now as that we are on the second keyframe we can do that a little bit brighter. We can bring back the white balance a little bit and then I go to the third keyframe again with the sync script. Now I make it a little bit brighter again and I 
Make it a little bit more blue, then again, sync it to the fourth keyframe. This is quite warm now, so I will bring back the white balance even more and make it even brighter. And now go to the last keyframe and there is the sunrise is gone. So I will just make sure that it's even brighter and reduce the blue again a little bit. That was very rough, but of course you can invest more time to edit your keyframes, but for this tutorial I guess it will do. Now I will go back to the library, press G to go to grid view, select all the keyframes and do metadata, save metadata to files. Our well, time lapse has now automatically reloaded the keyframes and shows us the progression in exposure and here the progression in the developed images. So if you skip through your keyframes with that small arrow here, you will see this is the progression of the developed images now. And the first keyframe here seems to be a little bit brighter than the second one. And that's something that I can easily correct now in LR timelapse just by dragging down the exposure of the first keyframe a little bit in order to get a better progression. That's something where these sliders here come in very handy. Next step would be to do the auto transition and wait for the visual previews to be generated. As I explained in the basic tutorial, this will set back the mode of visual preview generation to generate visual previews for all images as opposed to before where it was only generating previews for the keyframes. Now you already will get quite a smooth curve. Most of the zigzag would have been gone, but of course sometimes there will be some residual effects as you can see here, because the Holy Grail wizard will work in a mathematical manner. It will just use the information from the EXIF data that the camera writes to calculate the compensations. And that EXIF data is not always really accurate. That's why we will add another step, the visual deflicker, which really works on a visual way in order to smooth out the curve completely. And as I explained in the basic tutorial, I'd always recommend to set a reference area for the flicker. In this case, I will put it to the sky. This will make it even easier to see the progression. And now we can apply the visual deflicker to this sequence in order to remove all that little nasty zigzag effects that we still have on that curve. But before we do so, we can just do a quick playback. And you see there are still some little flicker effects that we are going to remove now. Let's activate visual deflicker. Now you can see why this smoothing slider is so important because we want to preserve the general appearance of this curve and just make it smooth out those little zigzag effects here. So that's a good setting. Let's do a two pass multipass deflicker. Now after two passes of visual multipass deflicker, we have a rather smooth pink curve which perfectly matches the green curve. Let's play that back. So that's the result that I was expecting. A perfect transition from dawn to the daylight and that's how it should be. Now I will use the internal export and render in order to bring that sequence out. I will just use a standard profile here with standard 4K UHD. I will set my aspect ratio to 16 to 9, move the crop a little bit up, use some motion blur, sharpen and activate show in Explorer. And now let's export and render the sequence and check out the final result. After rendering the Explorer popped up with our final render, which we can just check out now. Yeah, looks beautiful. You see with our time lapse, it's really easy to get perfect holy grail results. The editing is quite simple. It's basically the same than in the basic workflow. You just add that holy grail wizard where you have the two sliders and you only make sure to have that compensation curve close to the horizontal middle. The rest is all the same. Just when editing your keyframes, make sure to create a nice 
transition and not have the daylight images being darker than the nighttime images but that's something that you can easily do when editing in Lightroom or even later with the internal editor in LR Timelapse to correct that brightness progression as I showed you. If you have any questions please come to the LR Timelapse forum forum.lrtimelapse.com I'll be there there we can discuss everything if you have feature requests, if you have bug reports, if you have any questions. So see you there. Bye bye. If you like the video, leave me a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more information about LR time lapse and timeless photography in general, just make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that.